Well, friends have identified him as 17 year old Elijah Alamin and say he did not deserve to die. According to police, the suspect brutally stabbed him to death just 48 hours after getting out of jail on another violent crime. The suspect's attorney says the mental health system is broken. You're going to the store, then your son just doesn't come home. Friends say 17 year old Elijah Alamine had big plans to own his own business one day. But on 4th of July, police say Elijah was at the soda machine inside this Circle K when 27 year old Michael Adams came up behind him and slit his throat. Ariana Ivory worked with Elijah at Taco Bell for a year and says they bonded over Elijah's passion. He talked about rap music all the time. He loved rap artists. Ivory says Elijah would memorize lyrics for a much deeper purpose than the music itself. He just always said that rap artists were like, it spoke to him and that it just gave him a sense of purpose in a way like that he went through a lot of things that they went through too. Never did Ivory think that would be the reason Elijah was killed. According to Adams' attorney, he was just released from the Department of Corrections two days ago after serving a 13-month sentence. The police report says Adams told police the 17-year-old was listening to rap music in his car, and he believes people who listen to rap are a threat to him and the community. So he said he stabbed him with a pocket knife. This is a disabled person, and he's been released into the world and left to fend for himself. And two days later, this is where we are. His attorney says the Department of Corrections failed Elijah and that Adams was put back on the streets with no resources or psychiatric help, even though he had a past of severe mental illness and violent crimes. She wants policy to change so no other teen has their life senselessly cut short. <sighs> Just. He had a lot of dreams that he told me about that he really wanted. And I just wish, like, if I could talk to him all the time, I'd be like, dude, go follow those dreams that you really wanted to do. Everybody deserves that. Now, that attorney tells us she wants to see more mental health resources and psychiatric help. I'm going to put the commentary about this story on pause right quick because I want to bring up a story that is pretty much almost, if not damn near identical to this particular story. So we're going to take a little travel back in time a little bit. We're going to go back. Um, we're going to go back uh, seven years. We're going to go back to 2012, November 2012 in particular. Now, you see right here on your screen, you see two people. You see Michael Dunn and Jordan Davis. Now, the reason why I'm bringing them up is because they this story right here is almost closely identical, almost twin like to the one that I'm going to continue talking about later on in the video. If you don't remember back in 2012 in November, Jordan Davis was with some friends at a gas station and they were listening to rap music. And then you had Michael Dunn and he was there with his lady friend and he got so irate because they were blasting their music, you know, just not minding his business. So he goes and he takes it upon himself to go and get his gun and then start firing off into this car. Mind you, it's a few teenagers in that car with Jordan Davis being one of them. Jordan Davis is the only one that died from his injuries. I'm not sure if the other one suffered any injuries. I think they did, but um, mainly from fragments from the um, vehicle. What Michael Dunn did is he got into his car and he drove away and just didn't think nothing of it. The cops weren't called or nothing. Now, mind you, Jordan Davis, like Elijah, was also 17. Now, this happened in Florida and it also happened the same year that Trayvon Martin was killed by George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin also was 17. Now, I believe it was in two different locations. Now, Michael Dunn went to trial. He got found guilty of attempted murder, I think, in the second degree for uh, the attempted murder of those kids. But they didn't find him. They didn't get him on the actual murder itself. But thanks to his parents and the community for pushing and pressuring the court system, they actually went back to court that following February and found him guilty of uh, murder against Jordan Davis. And now he is currently serving a life sentence in prison. Now, keep that in mind. And we're going to now bring it back to the uh, forefront with this story right here, where you have this individual who murdered Elijah El Amin in cold blood in pretty much the same fashion that Michael Dunn did with Jordan Davis, the playing of the rap music. That was his excuse. The only difference is the location, the people involved, 
the type of weapon that was used. Everything else played out almost exactly the same. You had a guy who couldn't mind his business and he went up to uh, to Elijah and just got into a uh, altercation with him, slit his throat and then stabbed him multiple times. Now, they said he just got out of a correctional facility two days ago after serving a 13th month sentence. And in the video, they said that he was uh, basically in, you know, incapacitated, you know, mentally ill. They're going they're going to go strong with this mentally ill thing. If y'all don't know, this location has the death penalty like they can get the death penalty. He can get executed. And that's what people are trying to push for. But they're trying to push for this mentally ill card in order to try to at least just get him life in prison without the possibility of parole. He does not need that. He needs to get the chair for what he did. In my all honest opinion. He said that rap music is what is destroying the community. Well, you know, what's so interesting about this whole thing is I did a little bit of research and it wasn't really hard to do. And I pulled up two uh, images. I pulled up two particular uh, images. One of them was what was the most popular music like genre of music in 2017. And it pulled up that Nielsen's ratings one, that Nielsen ratings uh, chart, where for the first time in history, hip hop and rap, maybe R&B, were e eclipsed uh, country music, which we all know is heavily populated by white people. And that was the first time that ever happened. But then I went even further. And in 2018, rap, hip hop, R&B, or maybe hip hop and rap. Ecl um, uh, eclipsed every other genre of music, maybe by a small margin, but it did for a second year in a row. So what does that tell you? If the majority of people in the population is white and we are on the low end, let's just entertain them right now and say we are 13 percent of the population. If these charts are correct and they are, that would mean the majority of white people listen to hip hop music. If those charts are match with the population, which means more people who look like this guy who did this to this boy are the ones who listen to it the most. I would like to know what his playlist is looking like. I really would, because I'm going to tell you this. If his playlist has any type of hip hop or anything in the hip hop genre on it, he's a hypocrite. That means I bet not hear or see any type of old school hip hop on there. I better not even see anybody on there who does like the dance songs like Crank That Soldier Boy or the Nay Nay or any type of dance song that had a hip hop beat to it. I bet not even see Eminem or even Lil Nas X, Old Town Road, the original or the remix in his playlist. But it does make me question what type of music does he listen to? Because he says that rap music brings violence, yet he's the violent one here. And he says it's destroying the community. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, you're destroying the community. You just took someone out of the community that was prepared to do something great for his community. He said he wanted to be a businessman. Who knows what he, potential this young man could have had. You took this boy away from his family. You took his potential away. You took a, you took a bright future away because you couldn't stand something. And then I had heard something and I'm not sure how true it is. They said that somebody close to him had been affected by somebody who also listened to rap music or something like that. I'm not sure how true that is, but let's entertain that and say that it is. That's no reason to go out there and kill somebody just because they listen to rap music. So they're just basically saying he went out to go find someone to kill because they listen to rap music. My question is this. If this is a white person, they listen to rap music. Would you have gone and killed them? You know what this sounds like? This sounds like that thing with Liam Neeson a few months ago who came out and said that when he, he wanted to go out and kill a black bastard because his friend had got raped in Ireland. And it's crazy because some people still actually believe that story. Or they're still trying to or they try to defend him actually saying that. It's amazing to me. This guy pretty much did the same thing, except he actually acted on his impulses and actually killed someone. This was a pure hate crime. It was a racist crime, and that's exactly what they need to get him on. 
He needs, he has earned, and he deserves the chair. Nothing more, nothing less. Point blank period. I refi- like I would almost petition for him to get just that. Like he went up there and he slit this boy's throat over rap music. And he's minding his business. This also goes into the narrative of Palm Colored not being able to mind his business. And let me just also add that this guy does not look anybody's 27. When I saw his image, I said there is no way that he could be 27 years of age. Maybe if you had said 27 times two, then I would probably actually believe that. But to say that he's just flat out 27, I nah, I don't believe that. But, you know, they age like ripe bananas and expired milk. It's just very unfortunate that this actually had to happen. Well, it didn't have to happen, but it's unfortunate that it happened to this boy. Like he has such a bright future ahead of him. I hate when I have to do stories like this. It's like it's very upsetting. It you know, it, some it's hard for me to do stories like these. It really is. Especially when it comes to the youth and our young people and the fact that they keep trying to use the mental illness card that is an insult to people who actually suffer from an actual mental illness it's an insult it really is but i offer my condolences to this family you know his friends anybody who was associated with him he deserves way better and they can start by pushing to get this guy to get put into the chair Because that is exactly what he deserves. Because if they knew this man had an issue, why in the hell didn't y'all try ease him back into society? Y'all just they like the person said she they just threw him right back out there, knowing this guy was unhinged. Let's just entertain that for a second. Let's just say he is unhinged or he had a mental illness. Why didn't you follow him more closely? Why didn't you keep an eye on this guy? Two days after he gets out. So he got out on the the second and killed this boy on the fourth. And now he's back in jail and he needs to stay there until they get the date to um, put him down like the dog that he is. That's all I can really, you know, chalk it up to being him being a rabid ass dog. That's all I can really, really say about that. But I'm going to end the video off here. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. I will talk to you in the next one. And rest in peace to Elijah.